This is Dr. Catherine Collins. I don't know if anyone will ever hear this. It's all over. I'm the only one left. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to yet another exciting and nail-biting review brought to you by Bridgeburner Gaming and, as always, in association with our best friends over at Fish Monkey Productions. This week saw the release of one of Sony's most anticipated games to be released on its PlayStation 4 in 2015. I am, of course, talking about Everybody's Gone to the Rapture. Developed by the Chinese Room and published by Sony Santa Monica Studios Entertainment, does this very British apocalypse live up to the vast amount of hype and expectation heaved upon it? Or should it have spent more time in its underground bunker? Well, we are here to find out. Unfortunately, the very short answer to the previous question is no. The Rapture only slightly falls short of the grand, immersive and exploratory experience that the Chinese Room promised us. Now, don't get me wrong, I thoroughly enjoyed this game and would recommend it to anyone, but there are a few glaring and, dare I say, obvious flaws that this game experiences. Firstly, using the term game here is probably a bit of a misnomer. Rapture is more of a movie that you experience at your own pace. Again, this isn't necessarily a bad thing, however after being released in such close proximity to the stupendous vanishing of Ethan Carter, it is hard not to compare the two. I'm trying to do my job. You two will be the only staff on site for this rotation. I'm just saying, if the main gate's power fails, then there's no way in or out of the observatory. That's why there are backup generators. Jesus, why the hell are we even discussing this? Just don't you come run into me if you get locked in. If we get locked in, we won't be able to come running to you, will we? You let us worry about the clever stuff and you can concentrate on sweeping up leaves and changing light bulbs. Happy? Now piss off. Ah, so. That was unnecessary. Just because you're angry with me doesn't mean you have to take it out on everyone else. Kate, can we just talk about this? No, Stephen, I'm done. I just want to get out of this place and tonight is our best chance of doing that. You prep the arrays, I'm heading up to Tower 6. Kate. I love you. You know that, right? Yeah, I know that. Come on, let's get started. Okay, so as you've just seen there, that really is the extent of gameplay in uh, Rapture. It consists of walking from one section of dialogue to the next, listening to the odd radio message or telephone call. There is no threat in this game, no puzzles, no interactions with other characters or items to examine. This does start to become monotonous after a while, especially considering the pace of the game and it is so slow. I completed the game in one sitting without ever realizing there was a run button. How is this you ask? Well in the controls menu the run button was never mapped onto the display. Further to my agitation was the fact that I found out after completing the game that R2 is in fact the run button. You just need to hold it down for about five seconds before your character actually gains the slightest change in momentum. This made backtracking and exploring this gorgeously crafted world feel more like a chore than it should have. Ethan Carter had a sprint button, hell it even had portals appear in the end game just to make backtracking that much more of a breeze. Finally, this is a world in which most of the houses and rooms within it are inaccessible. Come on guys, if you want me to feel immersed in this beautiful village, then stop breaking that immersion by suggesting that 99% of the population have locks on every single door in their house. That's just not realistic, and it just reminds me that I'm playing a video game. But for all my gripes, there are three things that the game shines exceptionally at. As mentioned, this world is incredibly huge and gloriously rendered. Even though it can feel bittersweet at times, my friend Kurt summed it up by comparing it to the incredible but nonetheless empty world of L.A. Noire. The small village of Yorton also feels hauntingly familiar, especially as someone who grew up in and around such settings in rural Kent. 
the music is also incredible, always unsettling and most of the time just at the periphery of your hearing. The score created here is one that I will remember very fondly. And last but not least, the area in which the game excels at the most is its story. It doesn't even reach the back fence, silly old bugger. Well, loaves and fishes we can manage, Father but garden Jeremy, designs a little good. Might I have a word? Mrs. Boyles, of course. Meg, will you excuse us, please? I'll uh, see you back at Charlie's later. Cheerio, Wendy. I was speaking to Barbara. She said there were some irregularities about Mary's morphine. Good grief. I mean, those are private medical records. Barbara should know better than to be discussing that sort of thing with you. If Dr. Wade finds out, he'll have no choice but to suspend her. Damn it, Wendy! Your brother is grieving. Mary was sick for a long time, and I'm glad it's over for her. Go and support Frank. He needs you now. God knows what you did. He sees. I just pray you can overlook Mary's weakness, but you, a man of the cloth, if you, have an issue you with bring shame on this parish. If you have an issue with me, I suggest you write to the Bishop of the Diocese. I have parishioners to attend to. Excuse me. As mentioned before, this is a very British apocalypse, and as you walk from one scene to the next, viewing the echoes of the residents, who used to inhabit this little borough, you get a real sense that this is exactly how a group of village folk would react to the threat of a viral outbreak and becoming quarantined. The voice cast is also absolutely top-notch. Personal standouts for me were Father Jeremy and Stephen Appleton. All the characters are varying shades of grey, with interesting developments and twists added to their stories as you see them. So is Everybody's Gone to the Rapture worth purchasing? Yes, yes it is. Is it worth purchasing over games such as The Vanishing of Ethan Carter? No, most definitely not. As enjoyable as the story in Rapture is, there is no denying that Carter is the better crafted, more polished and superior game. Thank you very much for listening and watching everyone. I've been Timmy Garrett with Bridge Banner Gaming and I look forward to seeing you all in my next video. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye bye bye. Bye.